When I look at tape today, I say, it's the fastest way ever invented to write data, ever. Okay, it's short of the finger of God in the old Ten Commandments. That one had Charlton Heston in it, by the way. Okay, uh, uh, you know, where the, you see the little lightning bolts hit the thing and it writes out 15 tablets. Okay, those are discs, by the way, the tablets, and they dropped one, and that's why there are only Ten Commandments. Um, uh, you also have uh, basically a, a capability that's been extended to 80% of the data in the world today. It's backed up to tape. Why? Well, because tape works. It, it provides great density. It, uh, uh, the newest tape libraries will occupy a single raised tile uh, or floor, uh, a tile of a raised floor, and, and uh, you'll be able to store up to 96 petabytes of, of, uh, of data in that space. Show me a disk array that can do that. There isn't one. Okay. Similarly, we've got less power consumption. We've got uh, reliability like uh, uh, to a much greater error rate per bit. Uh, and these are, again, like octillion and centillion measured in 10 to the 20 something. Um, the numbers of bit errors that you get on writes to disk versus the number of bit errors you get in write to tape. Uh, lowest uh, cost per gigabyte of all magnetic media. Air gap, so that when you write data to the tape and you take it off the line, if malware enters your environment, it doesn't affect the data that's sitting out on the tape. Okay? All these things, I think, are valid arguments, and they continue to argue for tape. In fact, I'm seeing some people now beginning to use tape. I was at NASA Ames, and uh, they've got a huge tape library. I don't know how many petabytes are in it. They stood up a file system in front of it, and now it's a NAS on steroids. You want data? You want data that's hardly ever accessed? You can look it up in the file tree in that file system. It pulls the tape and returns it to you. You go, well, how fast could that be? Who gives a sh Okay, you're talking about the worldwide weight when you try to download a PDF file off the internet. And it's roughly the same amount of time to get back to a file that you don't want on spinning rust. Tape has a lot of runway ahead of it. And I think we ignore it at our own risk. In fact, some people have ignored it at great risk. Okay, uh, it's the absolute minimum you can do to safeguard your business data. And if you don't believe me, just look at Commonwealth of Virginia. A year ago last month, they had a little bit of a, an interruption event. An EMC array, DMX4, lost one of its dual redundant memory cards. Now, I don't know why storage vendors don't do this as a rule, but you remember way back when, uh, when we were dealing with PBXs in our environment, if you had a bad communication card, a bad line card, there was an indicator on the edge of the card, so you knew which one burned out. You could yank that card, slide a new one in. It isn't indicated on a memory card. So the guy who came in from EMC, the service tech, inadvertently pulled the good card. Okay, and he didn't realize it, and it trashed everything. It trashed all the RAID sets, so you couldn't retrieve any data off the array, plus the SRDF, the business continuity volumes, and the point-in-time mirror split imaging files that you're, you're paying for with $80,000 per year license agreements on specialty software. It was all hosed. Now, the company involved, the, the, the provider, the contractor who provides IT services for the Commonwealth of Virginia, was uh, planning to decommission tape. They were planning to get rid of it. And the guy who was the tape maven over there decided at the beginning of the month, before he gets laid off, that he was going to do what he always does. He took his full volume back up. And they lost some data, everything that had transacted since that point. But the only way that they got that data back online, the only way that they got, uh, what was it, 24 of 27 departments of that government back up and running, Okay, the only way they restored service to over 45,000 consumers, which are taxpayers, uh, you know, who were waiting for their driver's licenses or for various certificates, birth certificates, death certificates, etc. The only way that they could get the machinery of the bureaucracy moving again was to restore all that data back from tape. Okay, now anybody, especially a three-letter acronym, Evil Machine Corporation or whatever, that tries to tell you that tape is dead, remind them of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Say, oh yeah, I heard about that, state of Virginia. Okay, now, tape sucks, not really. Uh, mostly, anybody who listens to a report that dates back to 1999 that was bought and paid for by a three-letter acronym vendor that said one in ten tapes fails on restore, uh, you suck. Okay. In fact, what happened was that 
if 99% or if one out of 99 tapes fail on restore, you fire your tape guy because he's using the tapes as frisbees when you're not looking. Okay, there is no statistical way for one in uh, you know one percent of your tapes to fail. No way. Okay, maybe one way. I remember when EDS before they were bought by HP, they were thinking of decommissioning their tape and they were having problems with it. And they brought me out to Plano, Texas, to their data center, and uh, they wanted me to try to troubleshoot the problems. I went out and I walked through their data center, state of the art, herding cats. You saw it in all the commercials and all that. And I said, well, where are the tape libraries? And they said, oh, well, we didn't have room for them in here. And they took me out to the loading docks on the back of the building. And there were their big STK libraries out there where they were exposed to the dust blowing in off the, off the range. You know? And the environmentals weren't exactly friendly to any kind of computing gear, let alone tape. I guess you have that kind of failure rate when you've got that kind of situation.